does the federal government plan to contest the legislation and what could this mean for its relationship with other premiers? We did invite Alberta Premier Danielle Smith and Alberta's Justice Minister Tyler Shandro, but they were not made available. So joining me now is Intergovernmental Affairs Minister Dominique Leblanc. Uh, good morning, good Minister. Morning. Good to have good morning, you. Uh, good to have you on the show. You've been able to read the bill. Is your government putting together, I don't know, a team or or, or your lawyers from the Justice Department uh, to look uh, at this, you know, unprecedented move from a province? Well, uh, of course, uh, the Department of Justice and Privy Council Office that works with me prepares analyses of important legislation like this uh, introduced in a provincial legislature. It would obviously involve a legal analysis of the bill. Um, but one has to be a little bit cautious. It hasn't yet been adopted. It may be amended. So we can look at legislation that's before the legislature of Alberta, but it has not yet become law. And there are a number of elements that are sort of vague and imprecise and as you said, I've, I've taken note as well of constitutional scholars, business leaders um, expressing some concern. And I even took note last week that a number of ministers in the Alberta government had trouble explaining some of the elements of the legislation themselves. So I think there's a lot of imprecision left to, uh, left to be sorted out. So what federal powers do, do you have or could you use uh, should this bill become a law? Are you looking at tools to counter this in Ottawa? Well, I mean, I, we're always prepared to ensure that important federal legislat le legislative measures uh, are able to be enforced and applied across the country. So, I mean, as an example, and as, uh, this is probably not the right way to proceed hypothetically, but the idea that there would be sections of the criminal code of Canada, which is properly in the purview and constitutional authority of the Parliament of Canada, that somehow the criminal code wouldn't apply in certain provinces, well, obviously that's problematic. But the key thing for us, Joyce, is that the legislation has a number of these sort of structures it sets up, but then a minister of the government has to come before the legislature, according to the bill as we understand it, introduce a resolution. That resolution has to then be adopted. Then the Alberta cabinet would issue some sort of order in council or some directive. So there's three or four steps that would have to happen before the actual bill would be applied. So even once it's adopted, it sort of sits on a shelf until a minister or the government decides to take a step under the legislation and then there's a further legislative process so it's far from clear how and where it would be triggered and ultimately we want to focus our relationship with the government of alberta on things that we think are important to albertans and it's not necessarily some esoteric uh, law faculty club debate on what's the appropriate level of delegation from a legislature to a provincial cabinet that doesn't seem to deal with some of the real economic and social problems that people in Alberta talk to us about. No, I know, but it is an unprecedented move. You know, it's sort of like a poke in the eye to Ottawa, to your government. This allowance, for instance, would allow the federal government to invalidate a law. I know it hasn't been used in 70 years. Don't scoff at it, because anyway, what she's doing is unprecedented. So are those things now being looked at you know, even if they've been sitting there dormant for 70 years, are you looking at things like that now? No, we're not looking at things like that now at all. We're, um, as I say, we're interested in the debate in Alberta. Uh, that's a very, very premature hypothetical situation. Um, because as I said, once the legislation is passed, if ultimately it is passed in whatever form, then there's how is it actually implemented or used. Um, so, uh, and it's not the first time, Joyce, that a provincial government has tried to poke the government of Canada in the eye. And that's not unique to Alberta either. So uh, we don't think it's important to run around and pull the fire alarm and uh, waste a great deal of energy on what is properly a debate so before the Alberta So when would that be then, Minister, when would that be, you, you, you pulling the alarm? At which point would you, would you think, because you must have thought about that, it would be time for you to intervene? Well, I, again, we don't know if we would intervene and in what circumstance. We don't, we don't know that uh, because 
there's no clear indication of how they might use this legislation should it be adopted. We're, we're really, Joyce, it, it may surprise you, we're not wasting a great deal of time focused on this. We're having what I think are constructive discussions with the Alberta government, with Alberta ministers, on things that we have in common, if it's infrastructure, if it's the fight against climate change, if it's some challenges around immigration, the workforce, labor force issues, housing. These are the things that are the subject of ongoing conversation, and we're not going to waste a lot of our time or, frankly, impede our ability to work with the Alberta government on these other priorities by getting bogged down in a theoretical debate. Okay, but what's not theoretical, it seems, is that this is spreading. So, Danielle Smith said, you know, no more, it's time to stand up for Alberta. You've got Saskatchewan that's thinking of a nation within a nation. Uh, you've got the notwithstanding clause being invoked. Um, it, you know, it seems that it's, it's getting a little bit dysfunctional. And I know you're going to tell me, oh, Joyce, it was always like this. But it wasn't. Um, actually, it wasn't. Um, well... Well, but Joyce, it, it ebbs and flows, doesn't it? Like uh, provincial governments from time to time. Look, it's always 13 against one. So in the 13, you can always find one that for whatever political reasons in their own province or territory decides that the government of Canada is responsible for a series of challenges in their province. Some of it may be true. Some of it may be exaggerated. Um, it's not new. Uh, the federation is strong. Governments take uh, positions on these issues and then collaborate constructively on a whole bunch of other issues. Uh, you know, Jason Kenney was hardly uh, somebody who shied away from conflict with the government of Canada. And he was one of the first provinces to sign a very significant child care agreement that benefited the parents of Alberta. So uh, you got to be careful not to confuse sort of the top end noise from the day-to-day, week-to-week work that goes on in a very constructive way. And it may be Alberta this week, it may be Saskatchewan at some other time. Uh, Newfoundland and Labrador has often been in the uh, in previous governments, uh, a difficult partner in the Federation for various prime ministers. This isn't new, uh, but it really doesn't worry us. We're focused on what we can do collaboratively and will allow others to judge the Alberta government in its own legislative measures. We will continue to follow this. That's all the time we have. Intergovernmental Affairs Minister Dominique Leblanc, thanks for spending the time with us. Thanks uh, very much, Joyce. Have a great day.